Thanks very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, it was a special pleasure to see uh, Gwen Moore. Uh, I told her, uh, we, we go way back, as she said, I told her I was disappointed she had not yet run for the Senate or the presidency. Not saying I would vote for her, but I, but I, 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 I want, I want to see her run. Anyway, uh, as you all know, the Welfare Reform Act of '96 considerably stiffened work requirements in what was then called TANF compared to earlier law. This hearing is about whether we should undo or weaken part of that change, which was to insist that not only that more. Adult, more recipients be in work activities, but that those work activities be shifted towards actual work as against education and training as, as had been the case under prior law. Uh, I advise against this change. I think our current policy is more or less optimal and we should keep it. Uh, there are se uh, several reasons for this position. One of them is that we learned under the Family Support Act, the prior law, that uh, putting a great number of recipients in education and training wasn't very effective in the sense that they, few of them actually went to work. The tendency was to go into education training, but often not to complete those activities and to stay on welfare. So we never actually raised work levels uh, through that policy. Uh, also, and most important, in the 80s and 90s, there were a series of evaluations showing that uh, reform programs that stressed actual work uh, outperformed those that stressed education training. That is, they led to larger increases in employment and earnings. Uh, these uh, tests directly compared programs that were focused on building skills with programs that were fo ba ba focused on putting people to work, and the latter were more effective. So we've already determined uh, the merits of this issue to a large extent. Uh, advocates say that people with higher education get better jobs. They assume that if we get more people to have that further education, they also will get good jobs. But the situation is muddied by the fact that the recipients at different levels of education are not the same. Uh, people with more education tend to be more able, more motivated than those with less, and that's why they do better. It's not really because they got another certificate. Uh, so uh, we have to allow for that, and that's what the evaluations do. They, they allow, they control for the fact that we're comparing apples and oranges. Uh, so the fact that you have this association of higher education with higher wages doesn't mean that we should go down the road of more education. Also, there's been some research to show that actually the best way in which most people learn additional skills is actually on the job. The idea that you have to leave work and go into a separate education training program is actually not the case uh, for most workers. Uh, the best way to move ahead in terms of skills actually is to work steadily at the job you can already get. I'm not saying there shouldn't be training at all, but it has to be in a context of actual work. Uh, and that's uh, not, in general, what we're talking about here. Um, it seems to me that those that, that set of evidences and experiences is conclusive against uh, the idea that we should move uh, back towards an education training focus. Now, some also argue that uh, the recession means that we should put more people in education training because they're not going to be able to get uh, work anyway, and we might as well use the time to, to build skills. Uh, but actually, there's very little indication uh, in the numbers, anyway, that TANF is uh, showing the effects of the recession. In terms of uh, work levels on the rolls, uh, it's just about constant. If you compare 2007, 2008, uh, the share of the caseload employed, it's about a quarter, a little above that. It's the same in both years. Uh, it's not coming down. Uh, those who satisfy work participation norms, about 70 percent of them are in employment. Uh, that's still the case. It's actually rising from 2007 to 8. So the idea that uh, we can't put people to work on TANF is, is really belied uh, by the numbers. Uh, so we have, to, we have to assume, as a general rule, that it's still a feasible policy to stress employment. I, I also have some questions who's supporting uh, this change, the idea of going back to education training. Uh, I don't see much evidence that states are in favor of this. Uh, if uh, states wanted to have more education training, then they would presumably be pushing the limits of the considerable room which is already available under TANF to have education training, in particular up to 30 percent of the cases that qualify for work participation can be in education training. Uh, but uh, only two states, and the numbers that I looked at, exceeded the 30 percent. That was Pennsylvania and Oklahoma. And, and on a national basis, only 12 percent of the recipients are in vocational training. So it isn't, doesn't appear as if states see this as a very promising strategy. They're not pushing the limits of what's allowed in TANF now. 
Uh, so I don't really think uh, the states are in favor of this. Uh, I think uh, the support for this is coming from advocates, community groups, and also uh, the education community. I think uh, they would like to move in this direction, but I don't see evidence for that. So I think uh, we can sum up the, the views of the, the proponents in this way. They're saying that there should be more education training that's constructive for the recipients, uh, that TANF doesn't allow this, and third, that states want to change. I don't think any of these things are true in general. I think there are some recipients in some states that might want to change. But as a rule, uh, what I see here is uh, an attempt to go back to the past. And I think we should recognize that our current policy in general is the way to go.